Sura ba ba ba, sura ba ba ba. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Come on into tonight's live. I am going to begin to expose the dark truth behind ink. Come on in and share, like, and heart the broadcast if you guys can for me. I am so excited for this live stream. I have been just sit sitting and soaking with the Lord um, about the delivery of this, and I cannot be more excited about what he's going to release tonight. I believe that so many lives are going to change through what he has downloaded to me through my life personally. And I 100% believe that it is going to enrich your life, that it is going to add to your life, that it is going to uncap and unveil such a realm and such a dimension that you didn't even think was there or that was possible in the realm of tattooing, what tattooing is, what is actually happening in the spirit realm when tattooing is going on, when you are receiving a tattoo, what is actually happening. So we are going to, you know, so many people had different thoughts about what this live stream was going to be about. I'm sure it's not going to be anything what people thought. Some people thought I was coming in here to condone tattoos. Some people thought I was coming in here to talk about some wacky stuff. Um, but I am coming on here to share with you what God released to me personally. So as you guys are hopping on, please share this. Please like and heart the broadcast because as you guys do that, it actually pumps up the algorithm and it helps people let it just helps people know that I'm live. Amen. So glory to God. Father, we just welcome you here right now. We thank you for what you are about to do. We thank you, Father, for every ear that is here to hear and every eye that is here to see. We thank you that you are enlightening the eyes of hearts, that you are bringing the power of the Holy Spirit, that you are unveiling and uncapping and removing veils from the flesh as we begin to go forth in this revelation, as we begin to go forth in what you have spoken over this subject tonight. We thank you, God, that your anointing is here to break, to sever the yokes, to set captives free. God, we just thank you right now that your power is going forth over this live stream, that it is going forth in dutimous power and in radical demonstration. We thank you for your spirit and your truth. God, we thank you for your Holy Spirit and your holy truth. We thank you in the name of Jesus that in all things you be exalted, that you be lifted up and that all glory be given to you for this incredible, uncapping, powerful, powerful revelation. So here we go, guys. It is literally going to blow your mind like it blew my mind. I am over 50% covered in ink, in tattoos. Everybody that knows me knows where I come from, knows my past. All of my full upper body is completely covered in tattoos. I may have a few on my legs and my feet are covered. So those of you that don't know me, I come from a past of radical ink. My mother took me to get tattoos since I was 14 years old. She was signing me to get tattoos. I was getting piercings and tattoos at 14 years old while other children were doing children-like things in their adolescence. My mother was actually allowing me to be in tattoo shops. I grew up around tattoo artist. I grew up around tattoo shops. I know a lot about tattoos. So this is not something that I'm swinging from the left field in. I come from this whole world of tattooing. I lived my whole teen years and half of my adult years before God saved my life in tattoo shops. So that is where I hung out. That is where I was most of my life. Before, before Christ, that is where I was. That is where my hangout spot was. So I know a lot about tattoo artists. I know a lot about the industry. I know a lot about the origin of tattoos. I know a lot about it. So I'm not coming at you sideways from any type of thing where I don't know any better and I'm just throwing, you know, um, a religious jargon at you. I actually got a few tattoos after I was saved and a few up until about not long ago. Yeah, I got a small tattoo that actually spoke of a Hebrew word um, about a year ago. So I, you know, was completely transformed and radically changed um, when God begun to release something to me. So we're going to get into this history in just a moment. I see we got enough of people on to begin to dive in. Please like, heart, and share for all of you 
I want to try to start at a good number of people that are here so I don't have to keep repeating myself. Hallelujah. Um, so as we dive into this, know that you're going to need to see this from the eyes of God. You're going to need to look at this from the eyes of how he sees this, not through the eyes of how you want to see this, not through the eyes of how you, you know, desire or what you think. This is not a religious broadcast by any means. You have full right to, to take this and to test it through the fire. You have full right to take this and do what you want with it. But I am here as assistant Christ to let you know some dark truths about it so that you have awareness about tattoos, about tattooing, and about the spirit realm. Okay, you guys know me by now. You know that the spirit realm is my lifestyle. I live in the spirit. I live by the spirit. I breathe and live and have my innermost being in the spirit and in revelation. So God released this to me personally. How it all began is I actually had a radical week of warfare. I had a apostle mama, an apostolic mama that I go to often and she kind of combats and we go, you know, she's just a, an apostolic mama. So she says, you know what? I feel like you're experiencing warfare and you need to ask the Lord about a past tattoo. Well, that just opened up a whole plethora. Can you guys hear the music? That opened up a whole plethora of revelation when I asked God about tattoos and I began to renounce things off my life. I began to renounce things that this tattoo artist was doing. I began to renounce a series of events, a series of things that maybe the tattoo could have possibly caused an opening of, an opening door to. And then I immediately heard blood transfer. I immediately heard the spirit of the living God tell me, Jesse, blood transfer, blood covenant, blood covenant. You made a blood covenant with this artist, with the tattoo that you were receiving. There was a blood oath. Listen to me. I'm going to debunk. I'm going to completely break down blood covenant. I'm going to completely break down the power of the body. I'm going to completely give you a runaround of information of the importance and the image of the body in God's eyes and the image of blood and blood covenants. But first I want to tell you what God released to me about the blood covenant. What you don't realize when you are getting a tattoo is that whatever life that the tattoo artist is living, whatever belief system that they operate in, whether it be, you know, affiliation with other gods, whether it be a cult, whether it be astral universal beliefs, whether it be satanic or whether it just be atheism, whatever it is, you are coming before the altar, so to speak, of this person that is that you are presenting your body to. You are presenting your body to this person that is about to have dominion over your body for the session. God has full domain over you as a blood bought as a blood bought son, as a blood bought daughter. But you are stepping into domain. You are stepping into that artist's territory. And you presenting your body forward. You don't understand what a body is to God, but I'm going to let you know what it is to God. It's not just a natural perspective. You're going to need to have a spiritual perspective. Because your body is not your earthly body. It is more than just saying it's a religious possession that God has possession over your body it's so much deeper than that in the spirit realm so hear me people of God it's more than just a temple and keeping your temple pure so much deeper so much more so in the eyes of God you bring your body forward to worship you offer up your body unto God as a living sacrifice unto him that's scripture it says, offer up your bodies as a living sacrifice unto me. As you do, you worship the Lord with your bodies. You are presenting your bodies as a living sacrifice unto the Lord. When babies in satanic worship go through a satanic commission and the occult has to present a sacrifice, what do they do? They present a body. 
They present an innocent body, not just a life, but they put a body on the altar. A body is a symbol in the spirit realm of sacrifice. A body in the realm of the spirit is a symbolic parable of worship, of worship. As you present your body to God, that is a presentation of worship. So when you present your body to the table of this tattoo artist, to the chair, and you lay yourself down prostrate for this tattoo artist to work on your body, to begin to literally create an abrasion on your skin. It is an abrasion. It is a literal, I don't care what anybody tells you, bloodshed. There is bloodshed and blood transference. There is a bloodshed and a blood transference. So you are presenting your body to the table of this. This is how the Lord showed me when I am renouncing this warfare that my apostle mama spoke to me and said, listen, this warfare is actually from since, from ages ago when you got this tattoo and these, this cycle of war, warfare comes and hits around this certain time because it's when you got your tattoo. And I was like, oh my gosh. So then this whole unraveling of tattoos and how God sees them started just unfolding and I broke an utter transformation. I had a transforming experience. So you are presenting yourself to this tattoo artist to literally create an abrasion on your skin. He is bringing a needle. There is actual abrasions. There is an actual going deep into the layer of your offering with blood transference. That's why he wipes your blood. That's how sometimes blood gets on his gloves. That's how blood, you know, your blood is getting on this artist. There is a transference of blood. So you can imagine whatever spiritual alignment is happening with that tattoo artist, whatever he's into, whatever he believes in, there is an actual covenant because there's an agreement. He's the artist sewing, he's the artist sewing art, sewing the image, sewing the design into your blood. It's a blood transfer. It is going into the blood. Okay? There is actual blood that surfaces. There is actual blood involved. Just like, say if you've ever done, if you've ever been into a cult or any type of new age or paganism, I was when I was 16, there was weird things you would do with your blood. Same thing with a cult. That is where there was certain situations that would create things to happen. So you can imagine whatever, how dangerous this is. I'm not talking about piercings at all on this live stream, but you could do yourself a favor to just go, I have a nose ring. I stay in the borders of Ezekiel 16 when God adorned his bride. He put earrings up her ears and a hoop in her nose and put fine white linen on her as a garment. I stay to the bridal jewelry. That's what I stick to. That's my personal conviction. That's my personal life. You're going to have to ask the Lord on your personal conviction because you cannot follow anybody else's personal conviction. You got to follow your own. So not rabbit trailing on piercings, but tattooing. There is a blood transfer and a blood covenant. We're adults here. If I'm going to say this, if you have a child watching, please have them go into another room for what I'm about to speak right now. If there is any children watching, I want you just to ask them to remove themselves from the broadcast while I share this, and then they can come back when I'm done sharing this part. Okay, so here we go. Sex. When you are an adult and you have sex, the reason why it's called a covenant and you have to break sexual soul ties is because bodily fluids and bodily blood is involved in the union in the joining there's a joining i have some ungodly bc tattoos on me still hallelujah um but god is going to remove them supernaturally amen so there is a sexual covenant when two grown-ups come into sexual intercourse there is blood there is fluid there is a joining same situation when you have a tattoo artist, 
that is coming into joining with your blood, there are covenants made, there are covenants involved, there are soul ties involved, whatever agreements there, you guys have to make sure that you are understanding the paramount of the spirit realm. There's a joining, and that joining of blood creates the covenant, which in turn can create a lot of mess and a lot of situations. When you fornicate, okay, and you are not in a marriage covenant, you create a unholy covenant. Why? Because you're presenting your bodies outside of marriage, wedlock. You are giving up of your bodies. There's a seriousness of the body that God was speaking in his word. And it's not to be legalistic. It's because of how he made your bodies to form. How he made your bodies to work in the spirit. There is a work of the design of a body. There is a spiritual power in the body. He didn't just create you with an earthly suit that he could just put your spirit man in. Your body is a literal point of access for the spirit realm. To receive radical dimensions of glory, radical dimensions of his outpouring, radical dimensions of whatever he wants to bestow upon you. Your body is the point of access that engages in the spirit, okay, that is the point, the key point of access for him to release upon you and for you to exalt worship as a living offering and a living sacrifice unto him. Your body is a portal, so to speak, to the realm of the spirit. So it is crucial that you understand that you're not just getting a tattoo, but you are coming into a point of access in a different realm, okay? You are stepping into another dimension of a spiritual reality. When you are getting a tattoo so just know that your bodies are crucial that your bodies are important unto God how he sees your body is not natural he sees your body as on such a high high I'm talking a high level like your body is is the second most important thing to God beside your heart your body is is such a point of importance it's the living tabernacle that houses his presence that houses his being your body is so important that's why he says do not defile the marriage bed do not you know defile the thing like do not defile your temple do not bring your body do not offer up your bodies unto a holy covenant because there's something destructive about your body going into something, going into a place that is outside of his design, that is outside of his design. He designed it in such a ordinance, such a ordinate importance that when you bring your body into anything else that is unholy, it creates destruction for you. It, it's not just unpleasing. It creates a realm of, of destruction. Okay, what does that mean? That means it opens up your life to calamity. It opens up your life to things that you, you think might just be runarounds, tie-ups, entanglements, cycles. And you're thinking, why am I still dealing with, dealing with this? This is so old. When really it could be tied to a transaction that you made with a tattoo. Okay, if you're heavily tattooed or you get tattoos, whatever. I want to dive into the number one scripture that we as Christians throw into the religious jargon. Throw into the, I'm going to get into the ones that we already have. This is no condemnation, please. I, am, I actually have no issue with my tattoos. I won't get any more, but I don't hate myself. <laughs> I love my story. I love how beautiful they are. Me and God already have that conversation. He is not displeased with me, okay? He just gave me an awareness 
as to the importance of my body. It was no condemnation. It was no like you sin. It was your body is so beautiful to me. It was your body is so treasured beyond a realm you could ever understand. Like your body is like the epiphany of like unto God. That is how he sees your body. It is like, it's his creation. He glorifies over your body. He literally glorifies and like, it's literally like this, this amplified spectrum of how he sees you. It's mind blowing. No words can depict how he sees the body of his sons and of his daughters. Okay. So Leviticus 19.28, I want to tell you the revelation he gave me. It's the one, it's the verse, you shall not make any cuts in your body. For the dead, nor make any tattoo marks on yourself, for I am the Lord. So we go into this verse and we look at the top three verses that you should not cut your beard, you should not trim your hair, you should not eat meat with blood exposed and we say oh well we just shouldn't you know think that we can't get tattoos because that just meant that we couldn't mark ourselves unto the dead i just can't get any 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 death things on me when really god illuminated this whole i can't i can't read your all of your questions you guys are gonna have to wait till q a time or something because there's too many questions um so we sit there and we we say well this doesn't apply but what this verse literally says if you go deeper into scripture leviticus 19 28 literally goes into the strong's concordance of hebrews 5 3 1 5 you could go look it up yourself it had nothing to do with cutting or marking yourself or tattooing yourself unto the dead, as in pagan rituals, as in occult, as in ghosts, as in ghouls, as in spirits. This specifically meant the dead in the spirit. It specifically meant dead in man's appetites. It means spiritually dead. In this Strong's dead strong's h5315 is dead will the desires of man self a seat of appetites emotions passions dubious activity of one's will that is what dead means in this scripture it does not mean you can still get the tattoos as long as they're not unto the dead it literally means that unto the dead meaning you cannot you should not mark your body get tattoos unto the dead meaning the dead spirituality the spiritual realm of death when you've been taken into life marvelous life you should not be taken into the death of your own appetites getting markings on your flesh cutting yourself, doing these things unto your own desire, unto your own appetite. It goes even further and says that mark means imprintment, which is a stigma. Do you understand what a stigma is? This is what Strong's, this is the next Strong's, H7085, which is Qua, qua Agua, Qua Agua, Hebrews strong 7085 mark mean to mark yourself literally means an imprintment the imprintment comes from the strong breakdown of literally calling the imprintment on the skin a stigma a stigma placing a stigma on your body onto the things of the deathly soulish realm unto the things of a deathly man, man-made appetite, manly 
appetite. It is soul life, soul mind, soul heart. The soul creature. Okay? The soul creature. This is what you should not make any cuts in your body for the dead. Nor make any tattoo marks on yourself. For I am the Lord. For the dead. Meaning, when you make this mark on your body, you're literally coming into agreement with the things of the dead realm. Which is the carnality world. The carnal world. The world systems outside of the life of Christ. Okay? And it puts a stigma, any type of imprintment, any type of imprintment on your body creates a stigma. Let's look at the importance of the body in scripture. Okay, I hope you guys are all with me. We're going to break it down because it's so big. Like I said, it's probably one of the biggest things compared to the importance of the condition of your heart. Your body is viewed from such a different type of kingdom realm, kingdom parable. Not like this world. You truly need to have the eyes of God to see how he sees your body. Romans 6.13 says, Do not present the parts of your body to sin as instruments of evil, quotations, unrighteousness. But instead, give yourself to God as those who have been brought from death to life and all your members to God as instruments for righteousness. So this shows me that your body is an instrument of righteousness. That your body is an instrument in the spirit. You can present this instrument to the things of unrighteousness or you can present your body unto the Lord as a living sacrifice to be an instrument for righteousness. Hallelujah. John Piper has an incredible teaching. It is the present your bodies as a living sacrifice. If you guys want to go look that up on YouTube, I just had so many people exit this live stream because people thought I was coming on here to condone this. So many people think that, oh my gosh, now I can't get tattoos because I heard the truth. But this is the truth. And if you deny the truth, that's an accountability on your end. I'm not being religious at all. This is what God gave me. This is the Bible and his revelation to me. It's just not what people want to hear. But you have an accountability to know and to listen. Romans 12 1 says we give our bodies as a form of worship I'm going to read Romans 12 1 to you right now Therefore I urge you brethren by the mercies of God to present your bodies a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God which is your spiritual service of worship your body is a spiritual service of worship. Your body is a spiritual service of worship. So just know, God sees your body as a portal, as a point of access, a conduit, if you will, of worship. So when you pour, bring your body to lay on a table, to have an abrasion where there's blood involved, just know it's a sign of worship because your body is just made to be that. It's not, it's not any, oh my gosh, I'm worshiping Satan because I'm getting a tattoo. You're just presenting your body as a living sacrifice. Your body was made to be a temple of worship. Your body was made to literally be a point of worship. It's just the facts. It's just how you were built. It's how you were designed. It's how you were made. It's just how God molded you how he said it was gonna go so you have to understand what you use your bodies for you know I don't know you're presenting your body it's a service of worship it says so in Romans 12 
It is a service of worship. Your body being offered is a spiritual service of worship. I didn't make that up. That's what the Bible says. It is an altar. It is. <clears throat> also, there was another facet of revelation of sowing and trading. Of sowing and trading. It's not just an agreement. It's not just a blood covenant. It's not just things involved there. It's an exchange. It's a blood exchange transaction where you're sowing. You're sowing. You're trade. You're giving your money. You're giving your money. Literally handing money. Money is involved. And your blood. <laughs> money was involved. Your blood is involved. It's an offering. No other way to go around it. An offering is involved. A literal offering is involved. You are handing over money. It's an exchange for the previous blood that was broken open from your body. You just made not only a blood covenant, but you just gave an offering of your blood an offering of your blood it's got your blood on it it's blood money blood money sacrifice sacrificial money blood money and whoever this guy or woman is whatever they believe whatever they do god only knows what they do because the industry is radical. Most of them, most of them are into some weird stuff spiritually. And it's dark. It's dark. So you are, even if you don't know, even if the guy's a Christian or the woman's a Christian, you're still putting blood money on that table for the image that was placed on your you guys need to go and ask the lord about cosmic surgery i cannot that is not what i'm talking about right now i'm talking about ink tattoos this is what the lord gave me revelation on that is what i'm speaking about i'm not talking about tattooed eyebrows i'm not talking about botox i am talking about marks on your skin i am talking about images engraved on your body okay blood money Blood was broken open and you handed over dollar bills, cash, money. It, they don't take credit cards. There is no credit card transactions. It is cash. Cash, money, literal, literal. Money being handed over, it's a trade. It's a trading floor. If you've done or been under any teachings with Ian Clayton you know about trading floors you know about the trading his revelation on trading and trading floors it's the same thing as sewing but it's a floor in the spirit you put your money on a trading floor that literally shifts platforms around in your life and makes stops it is a trading floor so you're putting money in a trade, You're putting money on a trading floor. Ian Clayton, trading floors, it's crucial. You, you have trading floors on all areas of your life. You, you make trades on so many different things. So, God's glory and not your own desires. Whatever the artists are into. No, no, you're, you can't get tattoos for God's glory. Your body is the glory of God. Your body is the living sacrifice. Your body is the living offering given unto God. When you said yes to him, you presented your body as a living sacrifice. 
Who else has a right to mark that body that you gave up? Yes, I am covered in them. If you would watch the beginning of my broadcast, you would understand my point of where I'm coming from with this. Okay? Yes, I am covered in them, over 55%. So, please go watch the beginning. Thank you. No ignorance here today. So, understand that as you go forth, your body is a living sacrifice unto the Lord. It's how he built your life. It's how he built your body. Every time you present your body to something, you are going to experience covenant. Whether it be covenant under his will or whether it be an ungodly, unholy covenant. You are bringing your body before something. You are bringing your body. Okay? So, I'm so sorry, but your comment was rude. So you can go and watch the replay when we're done and refrain from rude comments. Hallelujah. So just understand that when you are presenting your body, you need to understand that it's on a high alert to the Lord. I can't stress this enough. The transactions we make with our bodies. For we are to God the pleasing aroma of Christ among those who are both saved and perishing. Aroma comes from the sacrifice of your body. You didn't catch that. You guys didn't catch that. The aroma that's pleasing unto God is the sacrifice that's on his altar burning in your love and in your worship for him. The aroma that's pleasing is the sacrifice that you made to live for him. The smell is the offering of your body that is a sacrifice. So if your body is a sacrifice on one degree with the Lord, why would it not be a sacrifice when you go and get a tattoo and lay on a table? Why would it stop? Why would it change? Why would it shift? If your body was a living sacrifice unto God, it doesn't just say, okay, I'm going to just put this on hold now. I'm going to just put this on hold now. And I'm going to just come over here and let my body be presented over here as a sacrifice and a point of access of worship here. And then I'm gonna come back to you. No, you can't, you, that's living between two worlds. That's living between two realms. That's double mindedness. That is unstable in all its ways. Unstable in all its ways. Listen, I got a tattoo a year ago. I said it in the beginning of this broadcast. God radically transformed my life when I was speaking to my apostle mama, my apostolic mama. And I was like, listen, apostle, this warfare keeps hitting my life around this certain, you know, area. She was like, I really feel strong. You need to take a tattoo before the Lord. I keep hearing tattoo. I keep hearing that there's a tattoo that you need to renounce. And then before the, no, Jeanette, before the whole, before the whole thing started unraveling before my eyes and I was radically changed and my whole view because you guys know I am a protester against religion I mean religion do not mix I am not for the religious tea party I am not their cup okay I am not their cup of tea okay I'm not so you can imagine my distaste for the Pharisee spirit I was one that came at Leviticus hard. I said, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You don't, you don't understand. 
That verse is, they were doing it unto the dead. It was a pagan ritual. You, you, don't, you don't understand. That, that Leviticus, and then if you read the three, the three top, if, if I cut my hair and I eat, you know, meat with blood in it, then that also means that it was against God. So therefore, you know, tattoos are, are in that, that. That's not to say that tattoos aren't of God if I'm still eating meat and, and cutting my hair and everything else. But it was the initiative of what God was saying about the body. It was the driving post about his creation. Not to start hacking up or messing with how he created you. Okay? How he created your body. That was the whole incentive. Is to not start shifting and sculpting and changing how he created you and the dead there means spiritually dead it doesn't mean ghosts it doesn't mean paganism it doesn't mean a cult the dead means spiritually dead it meant dead manly appetites of mind will and emotions the flesh the death of your flesh do not make markings to your body unto the dead, the spiritually dead. Because when you make a marking on your body, you are coming into agreement with those that are spiritually dead. Because you have not, you've, under, you've been brought into the marvelous light. You have been awakened. You have seen the Christ. You have seen the beholding of his face. You can't turn back and go and walk and come into communion or come into covenant with something that is dead dead without revelation of truth without revelation of christ i feel the fire of the holy spirit my god lord touch your people touch your people right now with the fire of the holy ghost i felt the fire of god come upon me i don't know if any of you guys felt the power and the fire of the lord come on here but i'm telling you something is so real about this about god uncapping and unveiling just fastest that that we've said is okay i was there I said that it was okay. I said, this religion, this religious jargon, I'm over it. You know, I don't think anything's wrong with tattoos. I don't, you know, blah, 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 blah. I'm going to get Hebrew lettering. I'm going to get Hebrew symbols. I did. I was there. Up until about a year ago, my whole life changed with all of this. And I understood not what religion made Leviticus sound like, what my father shared with me about Leviticus and that verse. Where is it? I keep 16. 19, sorry. Leviticus 19, 28. He says you're coming into agreement with something that's dead. When I awakened you to life, putting an imprint on your body and marking it you're coming into agreement with a carnal desire. And that's what it says. It says man's appetite, man's mind, will, and emotions. The seat of appetite. It literally says the seat of appetite and strong. Right here. The seat of appetite. Strong's Concordance H5315. Strong's Concordance. The seat of appetites. That means a throne. You come into agreement with a throne. A demonic throne. Of your own appetites. Of your own desires. When you are touching. It's like a vase. It's like, like, like that's how I just keep seeing it. It's like, it's like a vase or a jar of oil. Like an alabaster jar jars of, 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 of oil. No, I'm, I don't think that they necessarily should be removed after, you know, renouncing and just talking to God. It's a relationship. It's not condemnation. I was not at all condemned. I felt even more loved that God cherished my body like this. That God saw my body with such radical light and euphoric love that I was like, oh my gosh, I can't get anything else to touch me. 
like my body is is holy my body is a prized possession unto God like I love I loved myself even more I did not go away like oh my god I can't I gotta cover up with long sleeves I, I mean I can walk around like this all day every day and still feel incredibly free because God showed me my body to him but I know how much my body is worth that I I don't want to step into another realm I don't want to step into another realm of something that's not pleasing when I've already lifted up my spiritual service of worship as presenting my body as a holy sacrifice acceptable unto God. He declares my body as a spiritual service of worship. That to me makes me feel like I really need to watch what my body is doing. I need to watch how I am presenting my body because however I present my body is the type of worship I'm giving, I'm releasing, I'm, I'm coming into agreement with Not only is my body not my own, but it is a pleasing aroma unto the Lord. It is a pleasing sacrifice unto him. So it's more like, it wasn't like he said, please don't do this. Please don't get any more tattoos or I forbid you not. He put a strong emphasis on how he sees my body. And he pointed to scriptures that shows me that tattoos and imprints equal spiritual agreements with carnal death and the desires of a dead man when I am free in Christ. I don't want to go back to my old nature. I don't want to make a blood covenant and a blood money offering trade, hello, to death or to my old creation. I certainly don't want to sow into it. I certainly don't want to give another offering when I gave my body as an offering. I don't want to give my money as an offering. Plus my blood on it. That is dangerous terrain, friends. That is dangerous terrain. I don't want to go there. If you ask me, you can do what you want. I'm not telling you, you better not go get tattoos. I am telling you, what is going down in the spirit with how God thinks about it. I'm letting you know how God saw me. I'm letting you know how God saw me. And if he saw me as his daughter making these transactions, doing these things, you are not outside of that. I, he is no respecter of persons. It doesn't matter if I'm in leadership. It doesn't matter if I preach or if I have an accountability to society or people to live up a certain way. He came to speak to me as a daughter, as a father, not a minister, not an apostle, not a leader. He came to speak to me as his pr most prized possession my body and potential dangerous ground and how he sees what our bodies are doing in the spirit the transactions we're making the tradings we're doing the blood covenants and the blood oaths we're signing not only with our blood not only with our bodies but with our cash so many offerings involved if you look at that so many agreements so many soul ties so many covenants I mean it's on every level every single level every single level don't go out and say oh my gosh you guys you know we're, we're religious red flag with everybody getting tattoos but share this video let them know what's happening in the spirit.
as they are of the spirit, as they are living for the Lord. No condemnation. No condemnation. No legalism. Just know everything in the spirit is by a certain law. Just know in the spirit, there are laws, there are principles, there are symbols, dynamics made that are not on a natural level at all. And we're not hyper spiritualizing any of this. This is just the basics of what scripture says about, the bo about your body. This is basic scripture on how God sees your body and the basic knowledge of sowing, trading, offerings, and worship. And just debunking Leviticus 19. And so many anti-Pharisee protesters <laughs> with, that, with that verse. I was one of them. I was one of them. But when I started getting all of these downloads, I went to that verse. And I dissected what that verse meant. And it wasn't at all what we interpret and claim. Don't just take what somebody says, what everybody says. I mean, I think, I think most tattoo artists go into this innocently. They, I mean, most of them don't even have the knowledge of what they're doing. Some of them do. Some of them are intentionally astro projecting, releasing stuff over you. Some of them really know the satanic origin behind. Some of them take it to the satanic origin of tattooing. Because there is, there is a dark side of the origin of tattooing. There is. In Middle Eastern levels when you know it was just the hand the hammer and the ink on the back that was for body modifications that was to increase the pain level so that you would have an ex a spiritual experience the more pain the higher of ascension you would go into other dimensions and receiving spiritual spirit spirits and possessions in your body the more you received pain it was like a euphoric entrance way or open way for demons to enter. There is a dark side of tattoo origin in different con different countries, different societies. And that's one side. But the pain tolerance would literally be so it would be an open entrance way because when you would peak at a pain level you would literally like, they would literally conjure spirits and it would become a portal. It would become a portal um, for spirits to come in and out. And it would be like a frenzy of horrible occult shamanism and witchcraft and all kinds of crazy stuff. So just know, I know before Christ, with tattoos, I'm sure many of you have, if you came from a childhood of trauma, you would go and get most tattoos to eliminate emotional pain. It would be your pain therapy, is what people would say. You would just basically, you didn't feel tattoos because your pain tolerance was so high emotionally through emotional trauma that the pain inflicted on the tattoo actually created endorphins of rest and relaxation. So many people that came from traumatic pasts are typically really heavily tattooed because it released traumatic pain. It helped cope. It was a coping mechanism for, for emotional pain. Totally unhealthy. So. Exactly, Dallas. Exactly. And that's another thing many people, we, you know, I, I was there too before God. I would get tattoos because 
I knew I was unique. I knew I was peculiar. I knew I was very different from my friends, from my family, that tattoos just fit well in the peculiar side of being different. So before I knew Jesus, that was part of <clears throat> my identity back then. So many other things that we just got a hundred, hundreds of sozos for, multiple deliverance sessions for, and got set free. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. But um, just an awareness for you to consider how God sees it. Ultimately, you have that will to make your choice. But this is how God sees your body. This is how God sees the money that you give the artist, the transactions that you make. It's blood money. It's blood transfers. It's blood covenants made. That's how he sees it. That's how he showed me he sees it. And um, I'm not here to tell you what you should or shouldn't do. That's not my job. <clears throat> but just be aware. Just be aware and be smart and be wise and take this into consideration before your uh, next choice. All right, guys. Well, let me pray for you. Father, I just thank you for every person that was on here today. I thank you, Father, for every person, God, that had a difficult time hearing this message. I ask that you would give them peace. Any area of their hearts, Lord, that may have gotten hostile over this broadcast, I ask that you would bring your blood and I ask that you would bring your rest over, that you would show that you are for them, that you are, that you love them, that you care for their bodies, that you see their bodies through such an illuminated lens, such a no vocabulary word, euphoric love and importance and such a high standard, such a high value, that bodies are at such a high value to you that, you know, this is why. This is why you made these, these, these principles. This is why you made things in this design. And I just thank you for understanding I thank you that you would illuminate their understanding. I feel the joy of the Lord. I ask that you would release the joy of the Lord, that you would show them how much you truly care, how much you sovereignly love their life, love their minds, love their souls, love their bodies that it literally becomes a pleasing aroma every time we sacrifice it in worship. It literally, a pleasing aroma. Can you imagine when you smell something that's pleasing, what do you do? You go, it's euphoric, it's an experience. A pleasing aroma unto the Father. It literally captivates Him. Your body unto him captivates him because it's his creation and it's what he made. It's what, it's what he made to be before him all the days of your life, all the days of your life. Thank you, Lord, for your glory. Thank you, Lord, for your truth. Thank you, Lord, that religion absolutely was not present on this live stream. It was just spirit. It was just truth. And it was just the heart of the Father. So we thank you right now that you're going to continue to ripen hearts and sow seeds and speak to them yourself. I ask you, God, that you would speak to them yourself in an encounters and multiple encounters and multiple areas of their life about this, that they would hear it for themselves and find it to be true. We thank you in the mighty name of Jesus. All right, guys, I love you so much. And I just pray that none of this made you feel wrong or that you have to cover your skin up at all. I, I don't cover myself up at all. I still have my tattoos revealed and I'm not ashamed of them at all. God knows that my view was that I was decorating myself 
I love art. I'm a colorful person. I'm an artist. And he understands that about me. And his main emphasis to me was my body. It wasn't about what I did. <laughs> it wasn't about what I did. That's religion that says, oh, well, look what you did. <laughs> I do, I do. I still, I still, and I still like them. I still in, enjoy seeing them, and it's a blessing when I come upon every, other heavily tattooed people. It's like I know you. <laughs> I'm like I know you. We know each other, and it's I can reach people that other people can't reach because of my tattoos. I can reach a society and a world that nobody could ever reach. That, that, ta that a tattooed society wouldn't even give their ear to. And I'm a witness of that last weekend. All of you guys see my posts of our brother, tattooed face, tattooed from head to toe. Just came out of drug addiction. Right there, put my hand on him, whacked in that baptism of the Holy Spirit, never spoken tongues in his life. Fire came upon his whole body. He fell to the floor, shaking and trembling, literally shaking and trembling. Yeah, my tattoos have transcended <laughs> into the Mount of Transfiguration. My tattoos went through a Mount of Transfiguration. They really did though. And I'm telling you, this, 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 man's life was radically changed and I'm not sure he said I you know didn't comprehend half of what you were saying on that stage but my spirit he said my spirit bore witness to what you were saying my spirit bore, bore witness with you and um, his life was radically shifted so God is good God is good he's so good share this broadcast with all your friends. I'm about to post it on YouTube also. So it will be on my YouTube channel if you have not subscribed to my YouTube channel. You guys need to go to my bio right underneath my profile picture. Go and subscribe. Hit the little bell so that you can get the ding on every video that is uploaded. I have literally over over 60 teachings, prophecies, prophetic soaking sessions, that you could just hit your earbuds in with an audio soaking track and disappear in heaven. Um, so you guys want to make sure that you subscribe. I'm actually about to upload it as soon as I hit that finish button. You guys can sew. I see people asking. Jeanette, you can sew right here. Let's see. Jeanette was just asking for a place to sew jessielive.com slash donate thank you so much no you didn't have to remind me I actually, I actually remembered Samantha God bless you guys. Okay, well, that's just about the end of today's broadcast. I put the link uh, down there for you all. And about piercings, I know many of you were asking me about piercings. I have piercings. I have piercings there. And I just remember what a um, apostle, when I was on a mission trip to Haiti, this apostle changed my life. I was much more pierced than what I am now. This was right when I came into the kingdom family. I had this pierced, my cheek pierced, that's what that little dimple is, my eyebrow pierced, my septum pierced. So I had lots of piercings. That one was already out by now, but I had my Monroe. And um, I, I had most of those out already. I just had my nose. My nose is my septum, my, my, my nose, and I believe my eyebrow. And, my ears were much more extensively pierced. He led me to Ezekiel 16. And it was when God was ordaining his bride. The scripture says, When I was decorating Jerusalem, 
I placed earrings up her ears, a rings, nose rings in her nose, clothed her in fine white linen and silk. And you know, he in his Haitian accent was like, "Don't you ever let anybody <laughs> um, count you down or mark you down for your piercings." Because the Lord ordained his bride with nose rings. It was a symbol of ordinance, of or, um, adorning. Uh, uh, piercings were a symbol of adorning with God. So that's why he put rings and piercings on the face. Because God was ordained, or, uh, I'm sorry, adorning his bride with jewelry. Okay. So, I... Personally, my personal conviction follows what that man said to me 11 years ago. No, I've been saved 14 years. So this was about two years after, so about 12 years ago. So um, that's, where I, that's where I am. Now you go take your own convictions to the Lord and ask him, I, I can't speak for you, but that's mine. And that's what I, I witness with. That's what my life witnesses to. So that is that. Um, actually, no, it's not. It's not all about the heart. It, it's it's very straight and to the point um, with the Lord. Um, just go watch the replay in the in the beginning. Um, explains everything. Uh, so yes, I will post this on YouTube right now, and. Um, I don't, I'm not getting any other piercings. I, I'm, 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 I'm good. <laughs> I'm good with where I am in life. <laughs> but all right, guys, I love y'all. Y'all are busting out radical questions. Um, y'all have a great night and I will see you guys for the next live stream. God bless.